friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. Today we're gonna do my October book haul. I have quite a few books to show you, as per usual. I'm gonna start with the two books that I got from Book of the Month. I did sign up again, and typically you get one book a month, but somebody used my link to sign up, so I got a credit. So I was able to get two books, kind of for the price of one, which already is a good deal, but let me show you what I got. I'm kind of surprised by the thickness of this one, but I picked up The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetys. I love Ruta Sepetys other books, uh, Salt of the Sea and Between Shades of Grey and Out of the Easy. This is her newest release. This one takes place in Spain in 1957. So we're post-World War Franco. General Franco is the a dictator in Spain at the time. And so this is gonna tell another kind of little known corner of history, which Ruta Sepetys is really good about doing that. I love that about her books. I always learn about an, a part of history that I might have glossed over at some point, but never really knew very much. And so I'm looking forward to reading this one, even though it's a bit of a chunker. <laughs> The other book that I picked up is ta Coates' The Water Dancer. Um, this is a fiction book. He has, I think, previously only written nonfiction. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that this is his first fiction book. In this book, we follow a young slave boy named Hiram who's separated from his mother. Sold in, His mother was sold away from him and he was quite young and had some mysterious power that was given to him when that happened. He then almost drowned in a river and this power saved his life. So there's a little bit of a magical realism element to it. Uh, this is after he d almost drowns and this urgency is building up in him to escape from the only home he's ever known. So begins an unexpected journey that takes Hiram from the corrupt grandeur of Virginia's proud plantations to desperate guerrilla cells in the wilderness from the coffin of the deep south to dangerously idealistic movements in the north. Even as he's enlisted in the underground war between the slaves and the enslaved, Hiram's resolve to rescue the family he left behind endures. I'm really excited to read this book by ta Coates. I'm hoping to read his um, nonfiction Between the World and Me in November. So hope we'll see when I get to that one. But I'm excited about both of those book of the month picks. Earlier this month, I was able to go hear Jasmine Ward speak and of course picked up one of her books while I was there. I'm currently reading Sing Unburied Sing, which is one of her fiction books that won the National Book Award. This is her nonfiction memoir. And in this book, she tells her story of growing up. She also tells the story of five young men that were close to her, whether they're related, uh, her cousins or her brother or friends, who within a four year period, all five of these young men died and tragic deaths, often uh, sudden deaths due to maybe an overdose, one of them was murdered. Um, so all tragic deaths of these young men. This memoir will combine those two things, the story of these five men, but also her childhood. I absolutely loved hearing Jasmine Ward speak. I thought she was incredibly well-spoken. I love hearing authors process of, of writing. So I loved hearing about Sing Unburied Sing that I've just started, but I also loved hearing her talk about this one, which is why I decided to pick it up. I'm very excited to get to this one soon, hopefully. <laughs> I did pick up two books from library sales, uh, not like the big annual sales, but just the sale shelves in the library. Um, I found Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I've already read this book, but it is on my list of books I'd like to own because I'd like to read it again and possibly share it with others. So I was super excited when I found it for a dollar at the library. I also, I think this one I found at a little free library, actually not the library, but um, this one is The Gown by Jennifer Robson. In this historical fiction, we um, have two timelines, which is very typical. One of them is in London, 1947, and the other is Toronto in 2016. And these two women that we follow in these timelines are connected because of the wedding dress that Queen Elizabeth wore in her wedding when she was Princess Elizabeth, when she married Lieutenant Philip Montbatten. I believe the woman who was involved with creating the dress is somehow related to the woman in the future timeline, the 19, the 2016 timeline. Um, so they're connected because of this dress. There will be a bit 
about the after effects of World War II. I believe someone in the story was a Holocaust survivor, so that will play a part in the story as well. I have just seen a lot of people talking about this one a few months ago, and it's kind of been on my radar since then, so when I found it in the Little Free Library, I could not resist picking it up and bringing it home. I have 14 more books to show you, and all of these are technically free because when I did that huge unhaul lately, I brought a lot of books to Second and Charles, and that's my used bookstore here that gives you store credit for bringing in books. So all of these books I used store credit to purchase, I did not pay anything extra, and I have more store credit to still use, which is exciting. This first stack are authors that I already own some books by these authors, and I just grabbed a couple more. Um, the first two are Christina Lauren. I have Dating You, Hating You, and Roomies. So Christina Lauren is a writing duo team who writes contemporary romance books. I have really enjoyed the two Christina Lauren books that I've read already and so when I saw that I could throw these in my cart and get them for free and they're in beautiful condition, I knew I had to bring those ones home. I love Susan Meisner and this one is called Stars Over Sunset Boulevard and I believe this is like an old Hollywood. In 1938 a woman has a job on the set of Gone with the Wind which I love that movie. Hoping to read the book next year. And then there's a present day Los Angeles timeline as well. I just know that I love Susan Meisner. Her books always get me in the, in the feels. So I'm excited to have another one by her. I also have another Sarah Addison Allen. This one is called The Peach Keeper. Um, she writes contemporary books with a little bit of a magical realism feel to it, a magical element to it, which isn't always a big hit for me. But for some reason, I love the way Sarah Addison Allen weaves in that magic to her stories. Um, so I'm really looking forward to reading another one by her. And they're also typically pretty short. So I was excited to find this one. Hazel Gaynor is another historical fiction author that I love. This one is A Memory of Violets. And it's the subtitle is A Novel of London's Flower Sellers. And I don't know anything about this. But look, we have two timelines. <laughs> Both of them are pretty historical. One is 1876 in the flower market. Um, two Irish sisters who are orphaned. And then in 1912... 21-year-old Tilly Harper leaves her home in the Lake District to become an assistant house mother in one of Mr. Shaw's training homes for watercress and flower girls. I believe Tilly will then find a notebook that belongs to one of those sisters from the 1870s. Um, so I am really excited about another Hazel Gaynor book and the, I've never read a book that involves the flower sellers in London. Then I picked up a sequel, When We Left Cuba by Chanel Clayton. I have her first one. Well, I have the first one in this duology, maybe? Uh, next Year in Havana. And now I have When We Left Cuba. So whenever I read Next Year in Havana, I can move right along into the second one. I picked up three uh, middle grade books. I normally don't pick up so many at once from Second and Charles, but they were having a deal like buy five adult fiction, get five free. <laughs> So in addition to that, all of it was coming from my store credit, so I couldn't resist. But these middle grade ones, um, I paid full price for, a whole $2.45 for The True Confessions of Charlotte Doyle. This is a Newbery Honor winner book by Avi. And when people talk about Avi, this is the one that they often mention. After I watched the movie Newsies last year, I wanted to read a book about it, and the only one that I could find was written by Avi. So I have read one book by him, and I'm looking forward to reading another one, probably during middle grade March. I was very excited to pick up another Jonathan Oxier book. We read Sweep, the story of a girl and her monster, as our group read for middle grade March next last year, and I have been wanting to read more Jonathan Oxier books since then. Peter Nimble is his series that is probably most popular, but this one, um, First of all, it has a gorgeous, shiny, shimmery cover, and I don't know anything about it, but I know that I wanted to read more from Jonathan Oxier. And then another middle grade that I've heard a lot about is Some Kind of Happiness by Claire Legrand. I don't know much about this story. I do like one of the blurbs on the back. It says, imagine if Wednesday Adams, from the Adams Family, had written The Princess Bride, and you've got the some kind of idea of some kind of happiness. A dark and meditative fantasy written with Claire Legrand's signature light touch. That sounds fun to me. So I have a feeling this is gonna be a little bit of a darker feel to it. In this book, we follow Finley, who I just looked up what it's about. And we follow this girl named Finley, whose parents are having a little bit of trouble, so they send her off to their, 
uh, her grandparents' house, whom she's never met. She finds solace in writing in her notebook, and she writes about this place called the Everwood, and then she discovers that the great woods behind her grandparents' house is the Everwood. Um, so I'm very intrigued by that and looking forward to reading it. Probably during middle grade March. I picked up Verity by Colleen Hoover. I have not had great luck with Colleen Hoover, but I'm excited to try another one. And I know this one is a little bit darker than some of her other ones, but that's all I know about it. I don't, I don't know. And another historical fiction, Atomic City Girls by Janet Beard. I had seen this quite a bit on Instagram and it made it onto my TBR list. So I brought it home. So we follow these women who are involved with this building atomic bombs situation. And when the bombing of Hiroshima brings the truth about Oak Ridge into devastating focus, June must confront her ideals about loyalty, patriotism, and even war itself. So yeah, that just sounds like another historical fiction book about a, a section of World War II that is very unfamiliar to me. I just have three more. I picked up White Chrysanthemum, which is another book that I have already read, but I had borrowed it from the library. This is by Mary Lynn Brocht. This one is about a side of World War II that, again, I wasn't very familiar about before I read this book. And in this book, we follow two Korean sisters, uh, one of them who is captured by Japanese and forced to become a comfort woman on the front lines of the war on the, J the Japan side of things, um, and her other sister who is left behind with her parents and what how their two lives branch out from there and what happens to them. Devastating. Devastating book and very well written. I absolutely loved it. One of my favorites from last year. A book that I have heard so much about last year or earlier this year is A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza. I believe this is a bit of a family saga of an Indian family and that's pretty much all that I know. Um, but I know that it's received tons of high praise from so many people that I respect their opinions. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. And the final one that I have here is this kind of fun cover, um, Three Things About Elsie by Joanna Cannon. This book talks about a friendship between two older women, Florence and Elsie, and secrets of the past and a lifelong friendship. So I'm excited to read this because I don't often read books that have elderly main characters. So I thought that that would be a fun way to branch out of my norm. And I've heard Joanna Cannon is a decent writer, so I'm interested to give this one a try. Oh, I can't go any higher. <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's all of them. I did it. <laughs> I'm putting them back down. <laughs> I would love to chat with you below if you have read any of these books, if you're interested in having me read them sooner rather than later, what were your thoughts on them, or anything else that you wanna chat about. You know I love talking with you down in the comments below. And that's it for this video. I will definitely be talking to you in another video very soon. Bye.